Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 71st Commencement Exercises for Claremont McKenna College. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate. Yes. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the achievements of the CMC community. May I ask you to please silence your cell phones and other devices and stand and join me in welcoming the Claremont McKenna College class of 2018. Thank you.
Good afternoon. <clears throat> Welcome to this august occasion. Let us begin with a prayer. God of heaven and earth, we bless you and praise you for everything is of your making, including this glorious day. We thank you for the blessings of our lives, each one. The blessing of intelligence, of desire, of interest and emerging passion, of aspirations to be ever better and able to accomplish ever more. We thank you for all who helped us come to this day, our parents, all those who loved and supported us, all who sponsored scholarships, our trust funds, Claiborne Pell, former teachers and mentors, for this day has been made possible by the efforts of so many. As we are able to take great delight in our experiences at CMC, may we in gratitude be empowered by you to go forth to use as best we might the education and formation obtained here. May all our efforts bring honor upon us, tribute to our beloved college, and glory to you, our God. Bless these proceedings and all the ceremony of this day. May we be icons of the great religious truth that the glory of you, our God, is each one of us fully alive. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please remain standing and join our graduates in singing their alma mater. Maestro, hit it. Please be seated. Uh, let's all thank Elizabeth for sharing her beautiful voice and beautiful work. Our, regist our registrar with the register. Thank you, Father Conroy, for your inspirational remarks and especially for your example. May you continue to work in our Congress. Thank you. May you continue to work in our Congress to put an end to division in our country. Madam Lagarde, we are inspired by your exemplary leadership to improve the human condition. And to all here, trustees and alumni, families and friends, faculty and staff, and especially our 2018 graduates, welcome to you all many congratulations. Thank you all for coming. We, we love you. Thank you all for coming today to celebrate with us the accomplishments and promising future of this class. Our program today has a beautiful arc. Jessica Witt welcomes you to the next chapter in the CMC experience as alumni. Our dynamic ath fellow and class-elected speaker, Isabel Lilias, gives you a memorable campus tour. 
our very our own Jeopardy, Jeopardy star and senior, senior class, class president, president Daniel Ludlam, Ludlam introduces our keynote, keynote speaker. speaker. Managing Director Christine Lagarde helps us understand our history and challenges us to respond to the imperatives that sit forth in our future. Dean Yuvin presents our honorary degree to Madame Lagarde, and I present a Distinguished Surface Award to Father Conroy. And then Dean Yuvin, he demonstrates his many linguistic talents by calling our graduates across the stage. And finally, I will give our graduates their final charge. Today, we listen and clap, we watch and click, we march, we hug. Most of all, we remember and we dream. Think about what Father Conroy learned when he did improv here with Robin Williams or ran 100 miles a week as a student here and how he puts that into his work each and every day. Think about the hard work and prior experience that Madame Lagarde draws on each day as she leads one of the most important institutions in the world. Think about what our graduates have learned, the challenges they've overcome, the social warmth and curiosity and joy and deep drive they share, and how they will bring all of that to every question not yet framed, every friend in need, every community divided in search of common ground, every problem to be solved. Before we turn to those memories, that future, that arc for our graduates, Let's take some time to thank those who helped us get here. None of us would be here without the courage and vision of our veteran founders, the greatest generation who had the vision of a college dedicated to the liberal arts as a foundation for the leadership that the world needs. None of us would be here without the generosity of time, talent, and treasure of our board of trustees and our dedicated alumni. None of us would be here without the close social fabric of three interwoven CMC families. First, our college family, the tremendous teaching and scholarship of our faculty, the mentorship and training of our superb coaches, the dedicated ser service of our selfless staff, our teachers, each crafted assignment, pressing question, red mark correction, each word of encouragement, our coaches, who championed and believed in you and taught you to believe in yourselves. Our staff, who counseled you through, who nourished you, who kept our dorms clean and our campus so beautiful. Come back to tell your old mentors at CMC how much they inspired you. Let the staff know how much their help was key to your success. Second, we thank all of you in the audience today, our families, our students' families, the siblings and cousins and friends but especially the parents and grandparents. Every Band-Aid, every mac and cheese, every ride or walk to school or practice, the love and financial sacrifice, and especially the empowerment that comes from investing in the extraordinary abilities of this next great generation. And graduates, don't just thank them today. Call your parents. Call them, text them frequently to see how they are doing. And with that promise as consideration, let's thank our third and most special family today, our family, our community of students. I want to begin with our scholar athletes who uniquely this weekend have had to sort through some the most conflicting schedules of graduation and NCAA competition. Women's golf, as you all know now, won the national championship yesterday in a dramatic victory. <laughs> Margaret Lonke drained a 15-foot putt to win it and also won the individual national title and then got on a red eye all the way to make it here to graduation. Our top-ranked Athenas in track and field and both tennis teams are in competition this week and the men's golf team leaves on a red eye to the East Coast tonight. However, conflicts in both women's softball and lacrosse schedules meant that four of our seniors chose to compete and had to miss the ceremony here today and two decided to miss the competition instead. We, I, we are inspired by their independent choices. Two of our softball seniors, Brianna Holly and Anna Gurr, chose to be here 
and gave up the opportunity to compete in the regional finals this afternoon. Brianna is the senior class valedictorian. valedictorian. Anna, Anna is the Skyac Pitcher of the Year and MVP of the Skyac Championship and decided to be here. One of our softball seniors, Captain Carly Rolder, who just became the all-time career home run record holder, chose to remain with her team and compete in the regional finals in Oregon today. Three of our lacrosse seniors, Evan Murphy, Lauren Club, and Catherine Hill, will take on Western rival Colorado College tomorrow, coming off 18 straight wins, and chose to miss the ceremony today to compete with their team. Well, we celebrated last night with a Skype celebration in what were probably the most unusual and highly spirited commencements anywhere in the country. And we all send them our very best in their NCAA championship bids. And like these outstanding women, we are thankful to you, the class of 2018, for believing in CMC, for believing in yourselves, for the warm, dynamic community you created, for the privilege and honor of supporting and challenging you, and for the leadership example you each set. So let's give thanks, all of us, to these interlocking families in our community. Congratulations to all as we proceed with our program this afternoon. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all of the graduates, parents, professors, coaches, staff, friends, family, and alumni who have made this day possible for the class of 2018. My name is Jessica Witt, class of 2000, and as the president of the Claremont McKenna College Alumni Association, and on behalf of thousands of alumni, it is my honor and privilege to be with you here today. Today, you officially and formally join the ranks of many distinguished alumni and the association of over 12,000 alumni, like you and me, who have made countless memories and built long-lasting friendships here on this campus and as alumni around the world. As I sat in your seats almost 20 years ago, I remember wondering what the future would hold for me and my classmates. While I can't predict the future, I do know for certain that the alumni of CMC are here for you wherever life may take you. Whether you're in Hong Kong, San Francisco, Tucson, New York, or someplace in between, there are chapters around the world that allow you to connect with alumni and parents at an evening with a professor, a networking event, a sporting event, a seven college worldwide social, and countless other events that occur each year. But I must admit that there's nothing like being back on campus. We look forward to seeing you back for alumni reunion weekend, impact CMC, to cheer on the Stags or Athenas, or to take in an Athenaeum talk, or perhaps just a Rice Krispie treat. Being an active member of the Alumni Association has allowed me to stay close with my fellow classmates, but it has also given me the opportunity to connect and develop friendships with various generations from the pace setters to recent alumni. As alumni, we always have something in common. And I'm always struck by the fact that even if the physical plant of the college has changed, that the culture and shared experiences remain the same. Everyone's story for connecting back to CMC is a little different. For me, it started because I thought being involved is what you did after graduation, because I grew up going to Notre Dame alumni chapter events with my dad and have been involved with the CMC Alumni Association ever since. For you, it could be to seek a career advice, to meet some people when you move to a new city, or to score a coveted ticket to Hamilton. It could also be to give back to CMC as an organizer, alumni interviewer, or to help our students find jobs and internships. So whatever keeps you connected, we want you to know that we will always be thrilled to have you back on campus or at our chapters for those, for those times when you're not within driving distance. We, your fellow alumni, are here for you no matter what. CMCers stick together and help each other out. It's one of the things that you do best. 
We cannot wait to see what life after CMT holds for you. Congratulations. I now have the great honor to introduce one of the incredible graduates from the class of 2018, Isabel Lilias. who is elected by her classmates to speak today. She came to CMT from the Philippines and is an international relations major. After graduation and some travel, she will be moving to San Francisco to work for a tech company. On campus, she has been involved with so many things, including the forum, captain of the 5C dance company, an intern with the Saul Center for Student Opportunity. Please give a warm welcome to Isabel. Good afternoon, distinguished, distinguished guests, guests faculty, faculty, friends, friends families, families, and of and course, course, the very, very good looking, looking and awe inspiring CMT class of 2018. <laughs> Since Mother's Day is tomorrow, I would like to first extend all my love and gratitude to my incredible mother, Cecile, and for all the other strong, kind, and loving mothers here today. Thank, Thank you for, for everything. everything. In the past, In the past couple of days, days people, people have been coming, coming up, up to me and telling me things like, I can't wait, wait to hear what wisdom you have to impart. You have to impart. I'm, I'm so, so excited, excited to learn about your CMC experience, experience. Or, or I look, I look forward, forward to your takeaways and insights, insights about, about your time, time here. here. While I am so, so flattered and so, so incredibly honored to stand here on this podium in front of you all today, I think it's ridiculous for a 22-year-old to give other 22-year-olds advice. <laughs> That's what personal trainers and therapists are for. So instead of attempting to pull some sage guidance out of thin air and terrible jokes, I want to tell you a story. Someone once said, that a story should have a beginning, a middle, and an end, but not necessarily in that order. Because I am, one, a literature major, and two, someone who enjoys giving people a hard time, I'm going to start at the end, or at least close to it. A week ago, I emailed the admissions office asking if I could shadow a CMC tour. Upon further inquiry as to why a graduating senior wanted to sign up for a pro tour for prospective students, I told them that I had the privilege of being the student speaker at commencement and needed some inspiration. Well, what I really wanted to say is that I had no idea what to write about, much less how to say it. They humored me and mistook my desperation for creativity and put me down for a 2.30 p.m. tour the next day. I stood at the back, 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 donning sun visors, phones unlocked, open on the camera application, as if taking pictures of their children on these campuses would be sufficient evidence for fate to let them end up there. My mom thought so. We started off at Kravis, and the tour guide began by explaining CMC's rich history, its connection with the other Claremont colleges, and its liberal arts curriculum. But as I peered through the glass panels of the third floor, down to the cube, and then all the way to Bauer at the other end of campus, the guide's facts and figures began to fade into background noise, and a different narrative began to play in my head. As the tour group descended the elevator, I remember sitting in Kravis 241, talking to Professor Ta about the use of drones in Yemen, the secrets to baking the perfect chocolate chip cookie, and how to succeed as a woman in a male-dominated field, all in the same conversation. I remember her talking me through my anxiety with regards to public speaking and how she let me step outside the classroom for a moment to breathe when I started to hyperventilate before giving a class presentation two years ago. I'm certain that without her, I would not be speaking in front of you today. When the tour group passed by the hub, I thought of my friend Jerry feeding me quesadillas and chicken tenders on a Saturday night, more like early Sunday morning, 
trying to get me to stop crying about how unfair it was that international students studying in America weren't guaranteed visas, or how I was devastated that my crush from my Econ 50 class left the party with someone else. <laughs> while, while the tour guide gestured to the Saul Center next to the hub and discussed CMC's internship opportunities, I thought about the post-it beside my boss, Beth's computer, that says, sorry, on the top, with tally marks counting every time I began a sentence or a question with the phrase, I'm sorry. She said that I was undermining my important ideas and good questions by apologizing for them first and wanted to help me practice the habit away. From the Saul Center, the tour group crossed over the fountains and the guide walked into the Athenaeum, backwards, of course, name dropping several popular individuals who have come to speak to the Ath. Despite being the Ath Fellow, I struggled to think of three names of the last speakers that I had heard. And instead, I thought of the time fried chicken was served for dinner at the Athenaeum, and the person beside me had commented that it was improper and inappropriate that I picked up the drumstick with my hands. <laughs> my co-Ath Fellow, Wesley, heard the comment and proceeded to put his fork and knife down and eat his fried chicken with his hands as well. <laughs> When we passed by the Beckett dorm, I remembered having afternoon teas with my friend Sarah, listening to Frank Sinatra, and reading passages from our favorite poems. When the group stopped to glance up at the Owen Tower in South Quad, I thought of my friend Brendan, who made me bacon and eggs at 3 a.m. in the lounge when I couldn't sleep because I was jet lagged and homesick. When we entered Robert's Pavilion, I pictured my friend Elaine, always front and center in my Zumba class, not because she was enrolled in the course, but because she thought, she could multitask by, you know, having a good workout while boogieing to sh some Shakira. <laughs> so what I realized on this tour was that everything the tour guide said was true and resonant, but the guide's narrative was so different from the one playing in my own head. Though the two of us had the same premise and the same setting, our stories were incomparable because we each had a different narrator and a different set of characters. And I know that as I was walking you through the tour, you recalled your own stories with your own professors, mentors, friends, and family who supported you, challenged you, humored you, and loved you. I want to be clear. I'm not trying to imply or insinuate that the academic achievement, career development, personal growth, and leadership that CMC fosters and champions do not matter. There are 300-something examples seated before me that show everyone how important those things are. It's just that these triumphant, passionate moments of great achievement, ambition, and prestige weren't the first to come to my mind. It was the little moments of kindness, of calm, of fun, of understanding that I will remember CMC and remember you, the class of 2018, by. Though I am incredibly proud of the work I've done, it is the people I have surrounded myself with that I consider to be my greatest accomplishment. So, class of 2018, as you celebrate your amazing achievements and your hard work today, and you, more than anyone, deserve to celebrate, make sure to find the people you've shared the little beautiful moments with and thank them. As I walked back to my dorm after my tour that day, I thought of the first time I stepped on CMC's campus. So let's go back to the beginning. It was the summer of 2013, the summer before my senior year of high school. My mother and I had just finished our tour and our info session, the last of the 10 colleges I would visit in my span of a week in America. My mom and I made our way back to our rental car, which was all the way over in South Pomona, hopped into it, shut the door, and buckled our seatbelts. My mom put the key in the ignition, but she hesitated to start the engine. Instead, she leaned back, and we sat in silence for a couple of minutes. I turned my head to face her, and she did the same. I smiled to her, and I said, Mom, this is it. And five years later, here I am, here you are, where an end meets a beginning, a new setting, a new premise, a new story.
class of 2018. This is it. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'd like to thank I'd like to thank Isabel for her uh, inspiring and thoughtful story, really touching. And I think I speak on behalf of all of us that we are going to miss Isabel terribly. Thank you, Isabel, for your hard work at both the Athenaeum and as a student leader on campus. You never cease to amaze us all, and I'm certain that you will change the world. In examining the Claremont McKenna culture and the roughly 300 seniors who are walking across the stage today, I find it astounding that we've risen to any challenge that has presented itself, conquered any mountains that have arisen, and taken a lot of healthy risks that have paid off. I'm proud of us, not only for our achievements as a class, but for each and every one of us in our own personal growth. I'm excited to see how we go out and continue to grow after graduation. The history of Claremont McKenna has been profound, although relatively short. Although we were founded in the 1940s as a men's college, we became co-ed in the mid-1970s and are now roughly half men and half women. Since the 1976 transition, the college has empowered students to break through any ceiling that society has imposed upon them. We've empowered women to speak out both on campus and in their communities and to pursue positions of leadership, and I hope we continue to empower women for generations to come. Today. I have the distinct honor of introducing our commencement speaker, Christine Lagarde. Our speaker today serves as a beacon and an inspiration for women across the world. She is, in many ways, a person of firsts. What do I mean by that? Madame Lagarde started by working with an international law firm in 1981. She worked her way up, joining the executive committee in 1995, and she became the, the company's first female chairman in 1999. In 2005, our speaker answered the call of public service from her home country and became the, tra the trade minister of France. In 2007, she became the French minister of finance, the first woman to hold such a position in a G7 country. As the French minister of finance, she guided France and helped guide Europe through the tumultuous 2008 financial crisis. But she was not yet done. In 2011, Madame Lagarde became the first woman to lead the International Monetary Fund. And over the last seven years, the IMF has helped guide the global economy and help it recover from crisis. And under Madame Lagarde's leadership, issues such as inequality, climate change, and uh, global warming and gender empowerment have become part of the IMF's economic analysis. Our speaker, Madame Lagarde, embodies what CMC stands for. Her career of firsts in politics, in economic and public service is in many ways the kind of career that we think about at CMC. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, Madam Christine Lagarde. Good afternoon to all of you and Thank you, Danielle. I've been speaking after presidents, prime ministers, dignitaries of all sorts, even celebrities at times. But to speak after somebody who has been a Jeopardy contestant, that <laughs> never. So, yes. <laughs> to President Chabald, to trustees, to the faculty members and to the administration, thank you very much for inviting me today and for making such a sunny day. <laughs> uh, for the poor Washington-based Normand national that I am. 
To the class of 2018, congratulations to all of you. But as President Sherlock said, it's not a journey that you've accomplished by yourself. So I think we should all together thank your parents, your entire family, your teachers, your professors. Congratulations to all of you. You sacrifice, your support, your encouragement, and your love more than anything else have been invaluable and have made this day actually possible. And if I may, because mine is not in this world anymore, but I can't help thinking of her on the day before Mother's Day, I would like us to take just a moment to celebrate all our mothers and give them a big, big round of applause. <laughs> now, there's another group that I would like to uh, acknowledge here. You've been mentioned by the president. It's your very own national champion women's volleyball team, the Athenas. Congratulations, girls. And as a daughter of classics teacher, I was really intrigued to learn of your team name. And I was even more intrigued and fascinated when I read that in order to motivate the team, your coach developed an Athena-inspired journey and that he used actually the analogy of the three pillars that hold the Parthenon, there are a few more than three actually, but three is critical for the balance, of focus, passion, and resilience. Now, when I was on the French national, national synchronized team, I wish I had a coach who was as smart as yours. Well done. But when I read about this plan, I also thought, of another famous journey inspired by Athena, the Odyssey. In Homer's epic poem, Odysseus, also called Ulysses in my country, guided by the goddess of wisdom Athena, spends 10 years trying to get back home, 10 years of hurdles and obstacles along the way. And that was only to follow the 10 previous years that he had spent together with his mates to take over the city of Troyes, a Trojan war, as you probably remember. So I thought 10 days, 10 days once, 10 days twice, 10 days must be a sequence of significance. So let us try to use that sequence of 10 years. And I'm going to take you backward for 10 years and forward for 10 years, using that same idea that Homer had. So let us take a look back at the impact that the 2008 financial crisis had on the students who sat in your chairs exactly 10 years ago. And once we've done that, I would like to take you into 2028 to find out what today's middle schoolers do and face when they graduate for college and what is more important for you now what you will have done to make their journey a successful one. So, back 10 years ago, in May 2008, what was happening in the world? The global economy was in tatters. Bear Stearns had just folded and Lehman Brothers was about to go under. As French finance minister, I was in constant contact with my colleagues around Europe and the United States. And there was a very real sense in those days that the entire financial system would collapse. The global economy turned negative, international trade came to a halt, unemployment skyrocketed, and people lost their homes. And during this turmoil, the institution that I now lead, the International Monetary Fund, sprang into action. The IMF deployed its firepower and supported its member countries, committing hundreds of billions of dollars to help secure the global financial system, to make sure that people would not lose their deposits in the bank, and to kickstart the global economy. Through international cooperation, we avoided a global meltdown. 
But the consequences of the recession were felt by hundreds of millions all over the world, including here in California. Now, in the meantime, what was happening in May 2008 at Claremont? The class of 2008 prepared to graduate. They were seated just right there. But they were facing a major crisis in the job market. Research shows that the students who graduated in the United States in 2008 faced higher rates of unemployment and lower salaries than their peers who graduated either before them or after them. By 2013, the average college graduates who finished school during the recession earned no less than 36% less than peers who graduated a few years later. To put it in Homer's terms, the class of 2008, possibly distracted by the sirens of the financial markets, nearly avoided a shipwreck. Now, many of you have studied economics and the consequences of the Great Recession. How do I know that? Well, I looked at your thesis topics. <laughs> and one of you wrote about quantitative easing in the US and the UK. Another wrote about the large infrastructure gaps remaining in advanced economies. Now, one of the most impressive topics I saw was covered by, I'm going to name you actually, Tim Da, da Silva. All right, Tim, where are you? Yeah, okay, thank you. Can I, I'm going, I'm going to ask permission. Can I read the title of your thesis? Thank you. Okay, buckle up. Are volatility expectations in different countries interdependent? A data-driven solution to structural VAR identification for implied equity volatility indices. Yes. <laughs> I have to say quite a relevant topic as well. I am, and I understand an award-winning one too. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, this is the kind of work that anyone who has been tracking the recent ups and downs of the markets might want to read. Now, like Odysseus, the class of 2008 turned adversity into advantage. Homer tells us that Odysseus used the narrow escape between the Cyclops to convince his crew members that they could survive any future test on their journey. And when soon after Poseidon sent a tempest on them, Odysseus' men remained confident because they knew they could find a way through. In the midst of the economic storm, the class of 2008 also found new paths they may not have imagined during the years in college. In fact, a few Claremont students who lost their finance job in New York moved back to Silicon Valley and developed startups that turned into successful businesses. Others embark in careers in law, in public service, in education. And these young men and women were part of rebuilding the American economy. The international students who went back home to their countries also participated in the rebuild up of their economy. And the IMF, in the meantime, was also in the business of rebuilding the global economy. And we all cooperated with the same objective, rescue the system, make it work again. Now, that system was severely, severely tested in 2008. And that system was rescued and improved thanks to international cooperation, to leaders talking to each other, to all of us actually closing ranks and working together. And that was because we had the belief that we would be stronger together than by going solo. A lot was done over that past decade. A Great Depression was prevented. More resilient economies and safer financial systems were built. And because of this work, you, the class of 2018, you have more freedom to chart your own course. To graduate at, to graduate at this moment, in this time of prosperity and technological revolution is an extraordinary gift. But it does come with strings attached. 
Let me quote a modern day writer of epic stories, J.K. Rowling. I quote, you have a moral responsibility when you've been given for more than you need. You have the moral responsibility to do wise things with it and give intelligently. Now this is your challenge. What kind of country, what kind of world will you help build? What values will you respect? What will drive your life and the life of others? 10 years from now, 2028, when that class stands here to prepare for graduation, what will you have done to help them? Now, right now, the class of 2028 is about 12 years of age. They're not about to look for a job yet. But try to think of the global economy that they will find when they finish college. In those days, 2028, you might just walk into a meeting and sit next to someone who looks just like you, who cracks the jokes, and then offers to help you with a project. An hour later, that same someone, who is effectively a robot, will get out of the room to recharge his solar batteries. When you buy a cup of coffee, a quick retinal scan may automatically deduct money from your bank account, or maybe your cryptocurrency account. Cash may seem quaint. Here at Clermont, think of the experience future students will have. The Athenaeum could become a digital speakers forum where playwrights and poets interact with students through a hologram. Your professors will be available around the clock. Office hours may only happen twice a week. But through artificial intelligence, you could soon debate Aristotle with your philosophy te teacher any time, day or night. Something will not change, of course. I guess it will still be impossible to get into Econ 50. <laughs> yeah. Now, you think they could have made an exception for the head of the IMF? No. So yes, our lives will be more efficient, but there will be a cost. Because we might increasingly be much more connected or totally disconnected from each other. While at the same time, we will be seeking jobs and trying to learn new skills because our set of skills, so relevant today, will have been out of date. The fourth industrial revolution may well have morphed into the fifth industrial revolution that will owe much to services and data. How this all happens, who benefits from these changes and who is left behind is a story that you will help write. You arrive on the scene at an inflection point. The decision you help make through carriers in government, in finance, the tech sector or academia will change the course of this narrative. Will the technology company be regulated like public utilities? Will they be expected to respect your privacy, to seek your consent before they share your data? What will happen to those whose job will have been automated? Will excessive inequality continue to fracture our society? Shall we control our carbon emission and find a way to tackle climate change? Will we invest in our human capital much more so than in tangible assets? These questions cannot wait for the class of 2028. We need you help in finding answers now. As of now, you become the writers of your own epic poem. And the truth is that every student, every class, faces a unique set of challenges, and history judges whether they meet the moment. For me, one of my challenges has been gender empowerment, and I will say a few words about that. 
I finished high school, high school in France in 1973, and I was lucky to get a scholarship from the American Field Service and came to the United States of America in 1973. I worked on the hill, as some of you will do next year. Later in France, I went to various schools, including law schools, and when I applied to get a job in the largest and the best law school in Paris, I was welcome, and when I asked if I had a future as a partner, I was told no. And when I asked why, they looked at me with a smile and they said, because you're a woman. So from that moment on, I knew that there was something wrong and that we all had to do something to catch up and to make sure that those gaps or those stupid responses would not happen anymore. My generation, and probably your parents' generations, confronted unequal pay for equal work and gender discriminations that would prevent women from finding jobs and rising to the top. And the reality is that we have not yet addressed those issues and we have not fixed those problems. Progress has been made around the world, but certainly not enough. Today, women in the United States still make 80 cents for every dollar a man makes. The percentage of women in the workforce in the US has stagnated. It is exactly at the same level as it was in the 80s. In the meantime, other countries have progressed a bit more, actually. And less than 7% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women. Actually, there was a recent report that found out that there were more CEOs called James than there were female CEOs. <laughs> Fancy being called James? Yeah. And around the world, there are millions of women who are prevented to choose what they want to do in life. Many women who simply cannot open a bank account, cannot have title to property, and for some of them, cannot even leave the country where they live without permission of their guardian. Job is not finished. And I'm committed, wherever I am, including as head of the IMF, to make sure that these problems are addressed. And I'm re-energized. I'm re-energized because I saw who were the summa cum laude today. Yes, lots of women. So to all of you, the women and the men who are graduating now, I count on you to address those issues, to understand the challenges that your generation faces and how much work you have to prepare for the generation of 2028. You have that responsibility, not just the girls, but the boys, and you have to do that together. And my hope is that when the Claremont McKenna commencement speaker addresses the class of 2028, he or she will be able to say with confidence, thanks to the class of 2018, the world is a better place, one where there are better choices than just between Charybdis and Scylla. Now, I started with Athena, the goddess of wisdom, so let me end with her. At the conclusion of Homer's story, when Odysseus finally comes home, he discovers that not everything is so well. His island, Ath I don't know how you pronounce it, Itak, Ithaca, is consumed by conflict. His wife, Penelope, who does the tapestry during the day and undoes it during the night in order to resist those who harass her, those suitors, and his son, Telemachus, is not well either, Telemachus. So Ulysses, Odysseus, has found his way home, but only to confront new questions, new hurdles, new difficulties. And there he is, burdened, dirty, tired, exhausted. He's lost many, many pounds in the process. So you would think that he would be dejected, but he's not. He's actually determined. And why is he determined? 
because on the way, he receives help and love. Athena, her again, comes to him in disguise and gives him the encouragement he needs to face that new challenge. And he also encounters his wet nurse, Heraclea, who recognizes him, embraces him, and gives him all the love he needs. And he's determined to face yet again those obstacles and hurdles. So you too will face setbacks and unanswered questions in your life and in your career. But remember that you always have a goddess of wisdom in your corner, and it is your education, it is your experience, it is the incredible lessons that you have learned right here at Claremont McKenna. And there will always be someone along the way, maybe someone that you don't expect to give you that love, without which there is no confidence, the confidence that you will need along the way to face those obstacles and those difficulties. So just watch out. That wisdom, that love, that confidence, you will find them along the way. To the class of 2018, my congratulations and good luck on that journey. Thank you very much, Madame Lagarde, for those inspiring and thoughtful remarks. It is now my pleasure to confer an honorary degree pursuant to the relate resolutions approved by the faculty and adopted by the Board of Trustees. Making sure you get the right one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They hide as well. I would like to invite Madame Christine Lagarde, Professor Hilary Apple, the Podlick Family Professor of Government and George R. Roberts Fellow, as well as CMC trustee Sue Madison King to join me for the presentation. Please come over here. Yes. Madame Lagarde, in recognition of your many contributions and achievements as a global leader in economics and public policy, Clement McKenna College hereby confers upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto, in token of which we cause you to be vested with the hood of the college appropriate to your degree and present you with this citation and accompanying diploma. Madame Lagarde, we're very much in debt for your inspiring address, and I want to thank you on behalf of all of us for learning about us, for getting us. We have heard your words, we take them to heart, and we will contribute to this challenge. So thank you very much. Let's give her another round of applause. Today, it's also my honor 
to present Claremont McKenna College's Distinguished Public Service Award to Father Pat Conroy, a member of the class of 1972. Father Conroy, will you please join me at the podium? Many argue that courage cannot be taught. I disagree. At CMC, we have no required course in courage, but our students all learn to push themselves, learn to take on new challenges. They venture into unfamiliar territory and they grow their self-confidence and ability to serve others. We want our graduates, in their own ways, to learn to be as gutsy as Father Pat Conroy. He came to CMC intent on becoming a senator. He studied political science. He discovered improv comedy and played a killer Rocky Raccoon with his guitar. He pushed himself to beat expectations as a runner. And with 100 miles a week, he did just that. He may not have realized it then, but at CMC, he was preparing himself, whether as a priest or a lawyer, to support and inspire others. From people on the Colville, Spokane Indian reservations to Salvadorian refugees. From students at Georgetown and Seattle and Portland Jesuit High School, and now as the 60th chaplain of the US House of Representatives. He did not become a senator, well, at least not yet. But Father Pat now guides members of Congress through their own difficult challenges. He cultivates in them the faith they must draw upon to be courageous in service to others. Father Pat, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Claremont McKenna College, and in recognition for your outstanding service to this nation, I'm honored to present you with the Distinguished Public Service Award. We have now reached the part everyone has been waiting for, the conferral of the degrees. I would like to invite President Chodos and Chair of the Board, David McGrublian, to join me for the conferral of the degrees. I ask, I ask, okay. I ask all candidates for the master's degree and the bachelor's degree to please rise. That's you. <laughs> Come on, guys. The president. Mr. President, I now have the honor to present to the candidates here today, together with others, the degree of Masters of Arts in Finance and the degree of Bachelors of Arts as appropriate, as recommended by the faculty and as approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority vested in me as President of Claremont McKenna College, I now confer upon you degree of Master of Arts in Finance and the degree of Bachelor of Arts as appropriate, as recommended by the faculty and as approved by the Board of Trustees. Graduates, please move your tassels from left to right with your right hand and be seated. Here we go. It is my honor to recognize the graduates receiving degrees of Masters of Arts in Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, please come forward as your names are read to receive your diplomas and your hood. Paige Kirsten Buckland.
Mara Falahi. Hedi Hubidi. Scott Linz. Sarah Rachel Varghese. Thomas Volaro. Jahvi Zo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your applause for the MA class of 2018. <laughs> it is now my honor to recognize the graduates receiving degrees of Bachelor's of Arts and Master's of Arts in Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, please come forward as your names are read to receive your diplomas and your hood. Victor William Buns. Rish Manosh Chitre. Kendall Lindsay Greenberg. Joseph Anthony Melgesini. Gino Quaid. Leticia Rakesh Shah. Arushi Tibrewala. Shruti Topadurti. <laughs> Kathy Tsuhan Ye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your applause for the BAMA class of 2018. The next group will take a bit longer. <laughs> it is my honor to recognize the graduates receiving degrees of Bachelor of Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, come forward as your names are read to receive your diplomas. Issa Abdul Rahman. <laughs> Maya Adar. Christopher Ann. <laughs> Kaylee Solea Akins Irby. <laughs> Bailey Stephen Albright. <laughs> Akriti Mohant Anand. Crystal Rose Anderson. <laughs> Daniel Joseph Anderson. <laughs> Nolan Kabuke Anderson. <laughs> Vera Armas. Margot Jean Arnson. Jordan Grant Aronovitz. Pastor Jose Arroyo. David Arman Atilano. Rebecca Reyes Ayala. Grace Catherine Bailey.
Colin David Berra. Emily Carolyn Bassett. Mohamed Batal. Claire Spencer Baxter. Nisha Lee Bierman. Ellen Alice Berkeley. Zachary Byrne. Maya Bat. James Joseph Bilko Jr. Daphne Bimstein. Abhishek Biani. Benjamin David Blackston. Andrew Blanchard Reed. Corinne Megan Bogle. Bavaka Burragada. Jacob Brady. Jonathan Clement Brandt. Kara Ann Brinster. Jack Brown. Lindsay Sue Brown. Brendan Bush. Ayana Ellen Cameron Lewis. Roslyn Cantu. Elizabeth Marie Carrad. Jack Philip Carroll. Juan Castillo Jr. Davis Catolico. Devin August Cavero. Christina Maria Chaladinas. Curia Chun. Alexandra Cheng. Brian George Schmelek. Caroline Jean Camille. Jay Choi. Michael Choi. Rebecca Chung. <laughs> Evan Reed Chrisinger.
Robert Chewy. Alexander Clemens. Christina Constance Cobb. Michaela Ann Connell. Jackson Benjamin Cooney. Daniel Cree. Kevin Andrew Conanan. Chris Chisla. Lauren Katrina De Souza. Catherine Eleni De Fordis. Claire Elizabeth Dawson. Krista Danielle De La Torre. Timothy De Silva. Henry Robert De Ruff. Tyler Dion Dean. Stephen Reed Dickerson Jr. Lauren Nicole Dorsey. Claudia Javulski. Kyla Linnea Eastling. Chase Eller. Jack Michael Ely. Daniel Douglas Ensminger. Elijah Chaim Etzioni. Sydney Fay Flynn. Monica Catherine Ford. Devon Roberto Fox. Yevan Elva Fu. Lydia Turgin Fu. Graham Edward Fullerton. Jessica Sue Gaffney. Mitchell Alexander Geyser. Tanvi Gundam. Wining Gao. Manika Garg. Lisette Gaska. Tara Louise Gilbreth. Grand 
Brent Gilchrist. Vanessa Nicole Gill. Victor Ginelli. Lauren Bree Girada. Desmond Gutomo. Caroline Golding. Austin Lane Gosh. Juana Granados. Asher William Greenberg. Tane Gupte. Anna Marie Gur. Jason Connor Gush. Loria Guo. Brianna Rose Holly. Elizabeth Harder. Mark Henry Harris. Sebastian Serja. Samuel Robert Healy. Victor Manuel Hernandez Rodriguez. Christine Kiko Hong. Christine Janine Hu. Yuen Long Huan. Alexander Zoltan Husing. Christopher James Humphreys. Mohammed Kamil Hussein. Anastasia Ibrahim. Janine Kimberly Ivy. Brina Therese Jablonski. <laughs> Shaneli Nirmal Jane. <laughs> Ishan Jawa. <laughs> Margrita Jepson. Shirley Jiang. Max Truitt Jorgensen. Sydney Marie Joseph. Fiona Ke. Kanish Kapoor. (laughs) 
Amar Shafiq Karmali. Megan Rose Flaherty Keller. John Camilio Keikai Rantree Kellerman. Isabella Van Cortland Kelly. John Philip Kiefer III. <laughs> Roxana Ruth Kiesling. Eric Jun Boom Kill. Christine Kim. Jion Kim. Daniel Pence King. Zoe Claire King. Claire Colleen Brito Klein. Michaela Laber. Daniel Lai. Brian Landeros. Catherine Ann Lehman. Alexander Lebel Tashira de Carvalho. Christina Doyon Lee Choi. Jessica Yumi Lee. Justin Lee. Sammy Lemos. Ellen Ingrid Lempris. Isabella K. Lewis. Jerry Jaron Lee. Shenhui Lee. Isabel Lopez Lilias. Johan Lim. Alexia Caroline Lipman. Mira Don Liu. Audrey Liu. Lauren Ann Livingston. Madison Kendall Lodge. Margaret Martin Lonke. Daniel Rain Ludlum. Shana Emily Landford. Yeah. 
Brian Kenneth Lynch. Brendan Rand McDonald. Ashley Rebecca McCarchuk. Paul Andrew Maddock II. Clara May Matson. Kylie Noelani Mann. Alexandra Mazur. Maya Yukiko Matsumoto. Julia Campbell McCarthy. Morgan Taylor McCoy. Sean Michael McFall. Rodrigo Alberto Mejias. Isabel Julia Willis Mendiola. Eric Millman. Alexander David Mitchell. Evelyn Joy Mittler. Kendrick Stewart Morris. <laughs> Lauren Eleanor Mounts. <laughs> Melissa Jane Muller. <laughs> Rowan Yangwang Milligan. Brianna Monique Munoz. Lulva Murtada. Garrett Ross Myers. Aria Khan Nagjivani. William Kroll Newman. John Hamilton O'Malley. Nicholas Connor O'Brandt. Alex Kenichi Ollendorf. Hunter Douglas Olson. John Connor Ortman. Norman Martin Passivara. Shivani Pradeep Pandia. Caroline Claire Peck. Larissa Nicole Peltola. Haley Jean Peterson. Samuel Joseph Larusso Peterson. Shane Allen Pico. Woo! 
Hunter Pinson. David Roman Plumley. Patrick Quarberg. Christian Rofla. Aman Raghavanshi. Philip Rudolph Reed. <laughs> Laura Catherine Reisneider. <laughs> Natalie Margaret Ritchie. <laughs> Catherine Griffin Reidenauer. Mariah Rigg. Isaac Makua Roberts. Chloe Hume Rodman. Isabella Lombardo Romeo. Lauren Marie Rosenberger. <laughs> Kun Fan Run. <laughs> Benjamin Aaron Sachs. <laughs> Shambhavi Sahai. Indira Sanchez. Michael Anthony Scarlett. Thomas Hendrikus Rudolf Schalke. Abigail Gabrielle Berman Shantz. Lucas William Schwartz. Julia Seekat. Emily Jane Siegel. Jack Tyler Siegel. Blake Andrew Seidner. Siobhan Sait. Kaylee Ann Sievert. Brianna Allen Sewell. Ravi Prakash Shah. Suyash Sharma. Jonathan P. Shaw. Andrew Nicholas Sheets. <laughs> Devin Shim. Jasmine Elwood Shirey. Phoebe Shum. Matthew Richard Schumann.
Jacob Ralph Skoll. Bria Yona Smith. Cheryl Lynn Smith. Jackson Curtis Smith. Joseph Francis Smith III. Sydney Smith. Elaine Yeely Sung. Shelby May Stein. Tegan Leal Stewart. Mackenzie Catherine Strafford. Edward Campbell Streeter. Ryan Drew Sung. Matthew George Swift. Ijo Jack Tao. Shamira Ariel Tillman. Peter Tilton. Rachel Stephanie Tremarki. Aaron Tully. Shuti Venkatesh. Alexander Michelle Walker. Alexandra. Sorry. Elaine Wong. Yulong Wong. Elliot Allen Warner. Asher Reese. Robert James Weisenfels. Peter Thomas Welch. Nicholas Robert Wheeler. Wesley Whitaker. David Brennan White. Sarah Nicole Whitney. Patrick Dantzler Wildman. Jacob Trevor Wilson. Amy Wu. Lushan Xiao. Joey Yamada. Marcia Yang. (laughs) 
Suvana Yunani. <laughs> Zheng Ying. <laughs> Christina Song Min Yo. <laughs> Bracebridge Hemming Young III. Makia Young. Camille Julia Zellinger. Jackson Zepf. Ray Zung. Winona Wenhaul Jung. <laughs> Ellen E. Jing Jung. <laughs> U Chung Jung. <laughs> Yuji Zhao. Gary Young Jahong. <laughs> Yu Tong Jo. <laughs> Rebecca Zimmerman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your last applause for the class of 2018. Well done, everybody. As Isabel said, this is it. This is the charge. The role of the charge in our ceremony is to sear an exclamation point into our collective memory today, to exclaim a guiding lesson against the backdrop of these beautiful mountains to the north a theme that lifts us from the valleys and over the hills in our lives. My charge today is not a command or a diktat, a president telling our graduates what to do, what to think, how to act. No, it's something more internal, a drive, far more personal, self-generating, emergent. It's about the courage we need to face our challenges, the belief in ourselves to overcome, our understandable doubts. This is a lesson I've learned, we've all learned from you. Let's first put it in a broader context. Think of the challenge of Madame Lagarde to this class of 2018 to lead the way to create a better world for the class of 2028. The challenge to build new foundations against a shifting terrain, a terrain that quakes from the goods and the bads that come from globalization, the power and risks of exponential technology. In sum, the forces that make the world both flatter and bumpier. Forces that both push us apart and tie us closely together. Can we counter what separates us with what brings us closer? Yes. Yes, we can and yes, we must. But yes is not enough. To surmount the barriers in our way is tough, and many doubts often block our way. 
Yes doesn't answer whether we are smart enough, strong enough, prepared enough to take on any specific challenge. Beyond yes, today and after today, we need a phrase, a mantra, something that concentrates and set sets our minds and hearts on what we need to do to prevail. And so, graduates, please stand for your charge. Your charge will be a mantra to help you through any challenge you confront, especially the ones that you're not sure you can surmount. Now, as Madam Lagarde mentioned, and as you know, our Athena volleyball team prevailed through tough losses for three of the past four years. This year, through many battles and the intimidation of powerhouse programs and big, unfamiliar gyms, even bigger than ours, crowds of fans rooting for the opposing team, they often wondered whether they were good enough to win a national championship. Did they even belong there? And as you also know, Margot, Margot Arnston and the team answered a powerful, this question with a powerful mantra, I belong here and it concentrated and inspired them to win a national championship. Now, in a way, none of us really belong here, certainly not as a matter of right or entitlement. Nothing entitled Father Conroy to become the chaplain of the house. Nothing entitled Madame Lagarde to run the fund. They first had to yearn for it. They had to earn it. They prepared and learned for it. They ran uphill harder. They swam faster upstream, and in Madame Lagarde's example, with greater synchronicity. They cared more about those around them. They dedicated all they knew to get it done. Just like your brilliant faculty, how did Min Sin Pei become the first Library of Congress chair in US-China relations? How did Lily Geismer become a 2018 Carnegie Fellow. Just like your brilliant peers, how did our model UN team win its third championship, world championship in four years? With its signature commitment to collaboration. And how did Vanessa Gill in your class turn her own vulnerabilities into strength? When some of you joined her in creating Social Cipher, to help kids on the autism spectrum, and then got nominated for a National Geographic Chasing Genius Award. How did this year's national finalist a cappella group after school specials win a national competition to perform at the White House? At some point, each of them had to say, at least in a whisper, I belong here. And when I say I, we mean we. We do this together. When we say belong, we mean earned. It takes hard work. When we say here, we mean wherever you want here to be. And so think about your own vulnerabilities and insecurities, whether you've ever felt like an imposter confined to the margins, not up to the task, stressed out. And remember how you overcame it, how you thrived, and what you did to grow your own sense of belonging, how you aspired to be there, how you worked hard to find your way, the inner confidence and courage that you built in yourself. You yearned for it. You chased genius. You earned it. You worked harder. You learned it. You overcame challenges and created new opportunities. And you supported, in turn, those who supported you. So your charge today is to learn from that, what you already know deep inside, to keep aspiring, to keep pushing here to the place you want to be, to keep earning your way with hard work, preparation, and a commitment to excellence, to keep reflecting on the deep learning and the inspiration you draw from it in all you set out to do in the future and to help those who help you and those who can't help themselves. So keep yearning for it. We belong here. Keep earning it. 
we belong here. Keep returning to do it together. We all belong here. Class of 2018, we all believe in you. Many congratulations. Thank you very much.
Thank you.